Hey friends, Kevin here, and today we're going to cover what you can have in your van build, whether it's a cargo van or a minivan, whatever type of van that you're doing a conversion on to use for van life, if you have $1,000 to spend on your build. Now this is coming from experience from someone that's done a couple of these that uses two different vans, has been coast to coast several times. I found out what you need and what you don't. I've done a lot of it the hard way, wasted a lot of money. So this is going to put you into the best types of items. Now, if you've seen one of the other videos, the $200 build or the recommended $500 build, you're going to have a lot of really nice upgrades you're going to see in this video with what you can do if you have $1,000 to spend on this van build. So let's get to it. Now, a couple of these things are going to be the same items in the $500 van build, but you're going to have some niceties and some differences coming up here in just a minute. The thing that's going to be the same first is going to be the bed. You want to use one of these beds with a metal frame with a good four inch mattress. You're going to pay less than $100 for that frame. You're going to pay somewhere $100, $120 maybe for one of these good quality folding mattresses. It's important to be able to sleep well on the road or you're going to feel like crap the next day. We're not out here trying to see how much misery we can endure. We want to be on the road. We want to be adventuring. We want to be meeting people. We want to be having fun. That's the whole purpose of this. So out of our $1,000 budget, we're going to spend roughly $200 total on this bed system. And all of these products are going to be linked down in the description, down in the comment section. Most of these are the exact same things that I use and have used for the last three or four years. So they're proven products that are going to hold up. Now here's where we get into doing some better stuff. We're going to do away with ice. We're going to do away with dealing with ice completely because with a thousand dollar build budget, we can move you into a 12 volt refrigerator. So you're going to have a very compact space, but none of that is going to be taken up with ice. It's all going to be for your food. And you're going to be able to run this thing 24 hours a day. It's basically going to plug into a cigarette light or it's going to plug into something else I'll tell you about in a second but it's going to keep your food cold. You can set it wherever you want it to. It will stay at that temperature. It's not going to matter whether it's 50 degrees outside or 100 degrees outside. It is a small compressor refrigerator. It is going to keep your food at a constant temperature and keep it from spoiling, which is what you want when you're on the road. And it is nice, especially if you've had to do it for a while, if you can get away from dealing with ice and having to run out and find ice every day or two. Now, since we have this thousand dollar budget, we're going to move you up to a really nice rechargeable battery pack. One of these portable power stations, as they're called, from a good company like Jackery. Now they make smaller ones, but this one is going to be able to power just about anything you want it to. You're going to be able to go up to 500 watts on a device, which is up to five amps, which means it's going to charge laptops. It could run a CPAP machine on the 12 volt end of it. It's going to have enough power behind it, which is a smaller, cheaper packs won't. This is going to have enough power behind it to run that refrigerator of yours, not just for one day, but for several days before it has to be recharged. And you're going to see people with these power packs, these power stations that are talking about putting a solar panel to them. You can do that. If you're the type of person that stays stationary in one place all the, for days and days and days at a time, that's fine. If you're moving around constantly, which is the way that I travel, I'm very seldom in the same place more than one or two nights at a time because I'm out exploring. And while I'm out driving around every day, my battery pack is able to be recharged off the 12 volt plug-in on my vehicle. And when night comes, I'm ready to go again and I have enough power to run whatever I need to run. Now, there are people that's going to tell you for that same $500 roughly as this battery pack I'm showing you, 
that you can have a full solar system. And you can. You can get a solar panel and the battery and the charge controller and this stuff. Probably a little bit cheaper. The thing is, you're going to have to know something about solar. You're going to have to be able to maintain and deal with any problem that comes up you're going to have to poke a couple of holes in your van in order to install a solar system. You're going to have to deal with venting a battery and this sort of thing. So, there's nothing wrong with having a solar system. If you're new to this channel, I have two vans. I have a minivan that I run around in sometimes. I don't have solar in. I have a larger van that I did put a full solar setup in. I'm happy either way. It just depends on the way that you choose to camp. But for someone starting out or someone that doesn't want to fiddle with this stuff constantly and just wants something that works, one of these Jackery portable power stations, especially this Jackery 500, is going to do everything you want it to do. It's even going to be able to run some smaller devices if you want to have a little blender with you for doing smoothies. Uh, there's all kinds of things that you're going to be able to do with it to use this for. So it's going to be a nice upgrade on our $1,000 van build. And the main thing again is it's going to be able to keep your food refrigerated constantly. And it's the right size pack that it's not going to be undersized to where somewhere in the middle of the night, what you're trying to keep running is going to stop running because your battery pack ran out of juice. So that's why I recommend going with this size battery pack for the $1,000 van bill. As for cooking, cooking is simple. You're going to use a simple Colvin stove. Again, you've heard me say, you know, propane is the way to go. A propane canister is about three bucks. It will last for a couple of weeks. For most people, they're using it just to cook with. It is simple, All right? It is simple. It is cheap. I like the two burner stoves. If you want a one burner stove, save a couple bucks. That's fine. I like having two burners so I can be doing two things at one time. Now, you need a toilet. Everybody needs a toilet. A lot of people don't believe me when they first go on the road that they need a toilet, but trust me, they're going to find out eventually you need your own toilet. Regardless of where you think you can stop at and run around at, or even if you're in, in campgrounds, where you have somewhere in that campground a bathhouse or a shower house or whatever you want to call it. Because things are going to happen, trust me, you are going to end up sick in the middle of the night eventually. That is one of the things that is not pleasant to talk about, but it's one of those things that happens. The other thing is you're going to be fighting bad weather sometimes, and you just don't want to be having to jump out of your van and a driving rainstorm and run the length of a football field to get to, to a bathhouse somewhere. So it's nice to be able to have some type of toilet system with you. Now in the $200 van build, we had a cheap little bucket toilet. In the $500 van build, we ended up upgrading a little bit to this kind of fold out toilet. And with a $1,000 van build, we can upgrade again. We can get into one of these toilets, which is basically a full flush toilet just like you would have at home. It's going to have water in it. It's going to have a place to dispose of everything. I did a complete separate video on how these work. I will link this down below for those of you that are completely new to this. But trust me, this is going to be a nice, nice upgrade for you. These things can be had for less than 100 bucks. Again, I'll link it down below so you can see exactly what I have, see what the current price is. But... The thing is to be comfortable, be able to enjoy yourself on the road. And with this $1,000 budget, it lets you upgrade to something a little bit nicer for when you have to go and go, go, go potty. As far as a shower, we're going to stick with the same system. This rechargeable shower head system has a line that comes down. The end of it goes in a bucket. You hang it up somewhere, you hold it over your head, whatever you want to do, it is going to give you quite a good shower from one gallon to two gallons of water. If you're a lady with a lot of hair, you're going to need a little more water. 
If you're a guy like me that doesn't have quite as much hair, I can get by with a whole lot less water, but I can still have a nice shower with it. We're also going to put, again, 35 bucks or so into that privacy tent, that shower tent, because it's going to give us a place, especially for you ladies, one, to be able to take a shower in complete privacy, and two, if you're camped out somewhere, to be able to set that toilet out somewhere. And even if you're somewhere, you just need to think through the way these things are going to go, potentially. You know, if you're somewhere that you've never been before, you don't know where anything in the town is, at worst, you can probably go find a little city park, and if you just take the shower privacy tent and throw up, you've now got your a place for your bathroom in there, you can have a shower in there. There's all kinds of things you can you can do. It just opens up a world of possibilities for you. And that brings us up to lights, inside lights, and outside lights. Again, my favorite inside light that I've used for the last three or four years is going to be this one I'm showing here. It is a rechargeable light. It has its own little battery in it. If you can get several constant days out of it, you can get, you know, if you fall asleep in the middle of the night, it's not going to kill it completely. It, you can get through a couple of nights like that. But should you let it run down all the way to where it's not charged, the reason I have this is it has the little emergency hand crank on it. So you crank it for about a minute, and it gives you about 15 minutes of light. You crank it for two minutes, you get 30 minutes of light. So it will pull you out in a bind and solve your problem if you need a light in the middle of the night and you don't have any other light source. My other one is these four rechargeable lights for outside. And if you've not seen any of these other videos before, the reason I do this is I want light on every corner of my vehicle. I want a motion light, which these are, on all four sides. So whatever walks up on me in the middle of the night, tries to sneak up on me, I'm going to have lights coming on that will probably scare whatever it is away. The second thing is there's times that I am going to need, for whatever reason, to get out of my van in the middle of the night. And again, I'm not big and do it less and less as far as going to campgrounds. So I am usually off in the woods somewhere in the middle of the desert, just all sorts of different places and when you don't have a full moon or you have a real overcast night, you're not going to really be able to see what's out there. So with having these four lights and taking a little piece of Velcro and putting them on all four corners, on my two sides on the minivan, if you have a cargo van with an open door, it's going to be the same way. What's going to happen since that thing is motion activated as soon as you reach and hit that handle, it's going to jar and that light is going to come on. So before you open the door, you're going to be able to see what's out there and make sure that it is safe for you to step out of your cargo van or minivan, whatever it is you're using in the middle of the night. So if you add all of these things together, you're somewhere in the $950 range that keeps us within our $1,000 budget that gives you $50 for other things, maybe a couple storage crates, maybe some type of little shelf or table, whatever it is that's going to make your life better. But going through this with our $1,000 budget, we have covered for someone new or even someone experienced out on the road, being able to cover all of the necessities and solve the problems that they're going to need to solve, which is a way to store food, a way to cook, somewhere to go to the bathroom, a way to shower. All of these basic problems are going to be solved if you follow these type of guidelines. If you have any questions, I'd love for you to put those down below. If there's something you think I did right, if there's something you think I did wrong, you know, but please do me a favor. If you're one of these people that's all about solar, don't tell people that they're wrong because they choose not to go and install solar themselves. Everyone's not an expert, and I see this happen in forums all the time. Every time somebody wants to have a simple solution to something, there's five people jumping in and telling them how wrong they are. 
because they're not doing it all themselves and they're not drilling holes and doing a full, full solar install and all of this stuff. Not everybody wants to or is able to do this stuff. This is why we're giving you an easy way to do it. And quite honestly, again, in my minivan, I don't have solar in it. I don't know that I will ever put solar in it. I'm probably going to be changing from one minivan to another here soon. And I think I'm just going to put what I already have into the next minivan. I don't think I'm going to upgrade to solar because I just don't think I need to. And I'm using a little battery pack in it. And I have, you know, these same things that I'm showing you in this build. It's what I have used the last three or four years in my minivan being on the road. So it works. It has worked. I mean, I'm out for a month or two at a time. I have been from coast to coast. I have been from Virginia, Tennessee, where I'm based at. I have been into Canada. I've been down to the border of Mexico, all with this basic stuff. And the reason I'm able to do it is because it's solved every problem that people are going to run into with a van build on the road. It's simply the basics. Way to cook, way to store food, way to go to the bathroom, way to take a shower, way to sleep, be able to sleep well. That's it. That's really all that you need. Those five things all covered in this. If you're new to this channel, here's some other videos popping up of some other things that may help you out. If you're new to this, anything I can do to help you, any question you have, never hesitate to put that down below. We'll talk soon.